This is FA Ajagba's next opponent. He'll be facing him this Saturday, the 19th of September. His name is Jonathan Rice. And at first glance, if you look at his box rec page, I think most people, including myself when I first looked at it, are going to assume that he's just a typical journeyman, not really very talented. He's going to turn up for a paycheck and then find a comfy place to lay down on the canvas and do so at the earliest possible opportunity. But you'd be wrong when it comes to Jonathan Rice. He is somebody that actually has some ambition. And I say this after watching a couple of his fights. I saw his fight against Tony Yoka from back in 2017. That was Yoka's second pro fight. And also his fight against uh, Dempsey McKean, which was his last outing earlier on this year. Now, he lost both those fights. He lost to Tony Yoker on points over six, and he lost to Dempsey McKean by TKO in 10. He also, last year, lost to this guy whose name I always struggle to pronounce. Is it Makhmadov? He is a highly touted prospect from Russia who's based in, the, in uh, Canada now, and he managed to stop Rice in seven rounds last year. I haven't seen that fight, but as I say, I did see the McKean fight and I saw the Yoka fight. And Jonathan Rice is actually competent and he does turn up to try and win. And he's a very big man, six foot five. And if you look at his weight, 283 pounds in his last fight, 269. I mean, he's been weighing in the two, between the 260s to the 280s for his entire career so far. I think he has weighed as low as in the 250s for a couple fights. Okay. But he's a very, very big man. Now, despite the fact that he was 283 against Dempsey McKean, he it, he doesn't look like Jarrell Miller at that kind of weight. He looks better. He looks more svelte. I mean, he's not svelte. He's a very big man, but you know, he doesn't look like a big blob <laughs> at 283 pounds. That's what I'm getting at. And he does have some athletic ability there. And he is competent in terms of his boxing technique. I'm going to assume this is a guy who had, you know, a decent amateur career. And I'm also going to assume, when I say decent, I mean, maybe on, a, on the domestic scene in America, rather than being an international amateur. And I'm going to assume that he's also served as a sparring partner to a lot of the top heavyweights. I've got no evidence for this. I haven't heard anything about this, but I'm going to assume so because of how competent he looks in the ring. And you can watch one of his fights, at least, well, a couple of his fights on YouTube, the Tony Yoka fight, where, again, Jonathan Rice did turn up to try and win. And also the uh, last fight he had against McKean, that's on YouTube as well. The McKean fight was very competitive, very competitive. And he ended up getting stopped when he was trying to knock McKean out in the 10th round, he got caught with some shots. He was fatigued because he was putting so much into his own punches. And yeah, he got stopped in the last few seconds of the fight, but it was very, very competitive. And that was against an unbeaten uh, prospect in McKean. And here against Yoka, Yoka really had to be careful with Jonathan Rice. He wasn't a case of Yoka going out there and just boxing Rice's head off or blasting him out of the ring. No, the fight went the full six rounds and Yoka had to be careful. It was Yoka's second pro fight, but still he had to be careful with uh, Jonathan Rice because he's a, a big guy. He's pretty competent and he throws a heavy right hand. Okay. So F.A. Ajagba should win this fight, but I actually think it's quite an interesting one for a career building fight for F.A. Ajagba. Yeah, I do think it's quite interesting. It's his first fight with top rank, obviously. And they haven't given him a complete pie. Yeah, he will be the favorite, but th this is not so like some of the other Ajagba opponents. If we go through some of them here. Uh, let me see. Kajanu, well, he turned up to give it a go, to be fair. Kaladze gave it a go. He dropped Ajagba. But then you had other people. I mean, Wallish, Amir Mansour had seen much better days. He didn't really want much. And, you know, so on and so on. Others in Ajagba's career. So, yeah, I, I think that for Ajagba's 14th pro fight, and we know that he's transitioning from uh, one promoter to another, 
And he's also trying to improve, right? Because in his last couple, he hasn't exactly been that impressive. Against Kaladze, he was down. And against Kajanu, you know, it went nine rounds. So, and, and that's a guy who's been knocked out early by people like Daniel Dubois and Luis Ortiz. So he's going to be looking to try and sort out some of the issues that he has. And I think Jonathan Rice is a decent test to work on uh, some of the things he's been practicing in the gym, see if he can execute them in a professional fight. So yeah, the Jagbet is understandably the favorite, but it's an interesting learning fight here for Jonathan Rice and a fight that isn't without risk because Rice is, as I say, a big, strong man. He comes to try and win. He is competent. He's got long arms himself, 6'5", as opposed to Jagba being 6'6". Six, six. And listen, if Kaladze can have a Jagba on the deck, if Jonathan Rice lands that big right hand over the top, don't be surprised if a Jagba goes down again. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. FA Jagba versus Jonathan Rice. I think it's a decent little learning fight for a Jagbar, which might be competitive as long as Jonathan Rice is in there because he's not bad in terms of his athletic ability, yeah? Uh, for a big man, he doesn't move, you know, stiff like a robot. Uh, he doesn't look overly amateurish. He boxes in a professional kind of style and, you know, he pumps his jab out there. He's got decent kind of upper body movement and what have you. I'm talking about Rice here. So, you know, there's the potential there for him to ask a Jagba a few questions. So we'll see what happens on Saturday. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And I do have to end it by talking about how fickle so many boxing fans are. Because when a Jagba was still with Al Heyman, the PBC supporters were singing Ajagba's praises. They were making out as though this guy was the next best thing. But since he switched over to top rank, now a lot of these people are throwing him under the bus and saying, oh, he's just going to be garbage now. Well, why would he be garbage? Because he switched promoters. I don't get it. What's the correlation? <laughs> All of a sudden, overnight, in their mind, he's become a garbage fighter because he signed with top rank and left Al Heyman. And they're talking about, oh, loyalty. He should have stayed loyal to Al. As I've said many times, I don't believe in fighters being loyal to promoters and trainers and stuff like that. I don't, I don't believe in that because the promoter is not going to be loyal to the fighter if the fighter is no longer selling tickets. If the fighter is no longer a viable prospect or contender or champion, all of a sudden, the promoter doesn't want to put the guy on his shows. So where's the loyalty? You know, loyalty has got to be a two-way street. And realistically, with promoters, they're going to help you out as long as it's financially beneficial for them to help you out. Once it's no longer financially beneficial, then they're not going to help you out no more. That's not loyalty. That's just somebody taking advantage of you and you should have the same mentality towards them. It's a business transaction. You employ the promoter, or in the case of Al Heyman, the advisor, to fulfill a particular role in a business situation. That's all it is. So if that role is no longer serving you, then you get rid of that person and you bring somebody else in that is going to serve you in a business capacity. That's how fighters should look at promoters and broadcasters and all this kind of stuff. I forgot to mention broadcasters, you know, a few moments ago. You know, fighters shouldn't be loyal to broadcasters or, or promoters in my view. So yeah, it's kind of interesting the way that the PBC fans are now throwing a Jaguar under the bus and saying he's garbage because he signed with top rank. Look, as a fight, if you're truly a boxing fan and you care about the fighters, you want the best for them. And the best doesn't necessarily mean being with one particular promoter. That might not work out for him. He might be better off with someone else, you know? So I say more power to FA Jag, but let's see what he can do. 
And I look forward to seeing the Jonathan Rice fight on Saturday. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. It's happening, I'm out.